Andrew's game is a uh, uh, based on a book that's 28 years old. Uh, our producer was involved in uh, in acquiring the rights to this story, which is about the challenges a young man faces um, as he is uh, trained to become the commander of an international fleet uh, to protect Earth from an alien invasion. I hope that some of you have a chance to see the film, that, uh, that you know what we're talking about. Um, but I was, uh, um, I was engaged by the, by the relationship between uh, this young man uh, and myself, uh, the character that I played. Uh, Hiram Graff is uh, both the recruiter, the trainer, part manipulator, part mentor of this young man and helps prepare him for the challenges of leadership. I'll, uh, I'll now pass it off to Bob, <laughs> who's prepared by intelligence and uh, utility to tell us a little bit more about it. Uh, Gerard Biskis. Uh, I read the book uh, when I was a young man, when I was 12 years old, and always loved it. And this book had a, a long road to being made into a movie. The studio system had it for many years, and it wasn't until we all got together and decided that we wanted to be true to the grand adventure, but also the complicated and, and, and interesting themes that you don't always see in a grand adventure. You don't always see a big movie that has big spectacle, but also something to talk about afterwards. And when we read Gavin Hood's script, uh, we knew that we were all on the same page and that we all wanted to to be true to what the what the book always was. Mr. Kudnishto Dabarit. Um, hold on, I gotta, I, I'm not used to being like the FBI, this uh, earplug is, uh, let's do that again. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I'm just, um, firstly let me just say how you know, great it was to be able to get a cast that we got together on this film. This film is, um, has you know, two very distinct age groups, if I may say so diplomatically. In our cast we have senior gentlemen, um, um, Harrison Ford playing the role of, of Colonel Graf, but of course he acts opposite some very much younger actors, and so one of the exciting challenges of this movie was bringing those wonderful young actors in. Um, Asa Butterfield and Hedy Steinfeld, um, who play respectively uh, Ender Wigan and then Petra Arcanian, who um, is this wonderful girl in the movie, um, and, and Ender and, and Petra are these young recruits um, trained by Colonel Graf. And so one of the fun things on the set was uh, we shot the film in sequence as far as possible, partly because um, Asa Butterfield grew two inches during the course of the shooting, which meant uh, we at least started with him at a certain size and ended up a little, a little older. But also what really helped was he was a little intimidated by Harrison when he first came on the set. Ah, oh, Harrison, you know, you kept, him, you kept him a little at arm's length. So um, it helped in the movie to have him shooting in sequence because by the end of the film, of course, the character is not as intimidated as he is in the beginning and they have a really fantastic emotional confrontation. And I'm very thankful to, to Harrison and to Ben Kingsley and Viola Davis, the senior actors in the movie, for the way they worked so graciously and fantastically with the younger actors. Uh, it was a really great experience working with the actors. Уважаемые коллеги, ну теперь мы переходим, собственно, для чего мы здесь собрались, к вашим вопросам. Да, вот у девушки есть на первом ряду вопросы. Подождите секундочку, микрофон дождитесь. И просьба представляться. Uh, hello, Mr. Ford. Hello. Uh, I am from RAN TV Federal Channel, and uh, I am a woman question. Uh, recently, there are many divorces among celebrities and even politicians. Do you know it? Um, you divorced twice in your life, Mr. Ford. Uh, you know Russian men uh, aren't so generous. Are you generous let just, person? Let me just stop you right now. And, uh, I'm delighted that you're here. Thank you very much for your question. I would like to confine myself to the subject at hand, which is the film that we're here to bring to the attention of the public. Thank you very much for your question.
Uh, maybe... Спасибо большое за вопрос. Давайте к следующему перейдем. Uh, maybe... Подождите секундочку, дайте, пожалуйста, микрофон. Да, вот uh, у молодого человека на четвертом ряду в центре. Давайте по одному вопросу. Девушка, дайте, пожалуйста, микрофон. Спасибо большое. А четвертый ряд, да, вот слева. Добрый день, Вячеслав Яровский, кинопроизводитель ФО. Вопрос к Евгению Худу. Долго ли пришлось уговаривать Гаррисона Форда сыграть главную роль и были ли другие кандидатуры на роль полковника? No, look, the first thing we did was for a year and a half I wrote a script because there's no version of wanting an actor unless you deliver them a script that they want to play. So um, first thing you do is you write the best possible script you can. And then we sent the script to um, Harrison's agents. And I don't know what his internal process is, but we obviously waited patiently and with um, a lot of hope. And we were thrilled when he said yes to the part. So I'm not sure what Harrison felt. I read, a, I read a script that I thought was well crafted and had opportunities for um, uh, for a complicated relationship that uh, spoke to important themes uh, for uh, uh, young people and uh, for their parents. Because I think this is not only a story about coming to age, a story about the complications of a young person in a uh, in a in a conflict situation. But it's also a very good um, stimulation for uh, questions that a young person can seek advice from their from their parents uh, about. So it's a great entertainment. Let's not forget that uh, a spectacle. But it also um, has some very important context for young people who are faced with the challenges of growing up and, and fitting into a complex society. That's what I was attracted to. I was also attracted to the fact that, that uh, the, the filmmakers, uh, Gavin, had written a, a, a very good script and it was very, and clearly had ambitions, uh, had the correct kinds of ambitions. And I know Bob Orsi from other projects that we've worked together on, and I know <clears throat> that he is ambitious for the very best expression of the, Uh, possible for any film that he works on. I knew that there were very talented people already connected to the to the film. I was uh, delighted to have the opportunity to work with Sir Ben Kingsley, to work with Viola Davis, a very important and uh, 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 wonderfully talented actress. So there, for me, there was a, it was a great opportunity. Ваш персонаж готов пожертвовать всем и даже э, своим лю любимым учеником э, ради победы. Ваш герой злой или добрый все-таки? Спасибо. Well, let's remember what victory is in this context of this film. Victory is the preservation of life on Earth. You know? It's, uh, it's not uh, a further economic opportunity. It's not uh, um, a conquest uh, for territory. It's not extending a sphere of influence. It is the whole uh, earth united in opposition to a, a, uh, you know, an alien invasion of another species. And by the way, one that we can't speak to, only under Wigan. Uh, on, on account of his per, his uh, personal uh, intelligence, because of the kind of training that he's been given, only he makes himself responsible uh, for um, after the destruction of their planet. He makes himself responsible out of a, out of a moral understanding for uh, taking uh, the, the the potential of that life form to continue to a, to, a, to a new place for it to prosper. The character, I never judge whether a character is good or evil. That is of no, uh, that's a, a distraction. Uh, um, people do, people, a human being does judge himself according to whether they're behaving well or badly. 
and that internal discussion, uh, I think, is is uh, objectified through behavior in in the in the in the in the scenes, the very complicated scenes that I uh, have the pleasure, the very sophisticated scenes that I have the pleasure of performing. But the judgment of whether he's good or evil uh, doesn't is not something I would. Uh, I would concern myself in the way an audience can judge it. These are complex circumstances. These are, um, you know, it's it's clear to me that uh, that uh, Colonel Graff is um, both mentor and manipulator. This book, this book is taught, is used in the education of um, officers in the United States Marine Corps for the things that it has to say about the qualities of leadership. And one of the most important characteristics of a, one of the important characteristics of a military leader is his coming to terms with taking casualties, a great moral responsibility. And yes, Colonel Graff is willing to take responsibility for taking losses, as every military leader must. He would, but he trains, he plans, he hopes, he prays that he will that he will take that that through an efficient deployment of his resources, he will take the fewest casualties, and he will inflict the, the fewest casualty, uh, casualties in order to, um, to carry out the mission that he has, which in this case is the preservation of life on Earth. Thank you very much for the question. Yes, there was a girl with a young girl with a pilot. Good question, Garrison Ford. Александр Лябова, НТВ. В книге, в фильме обрисована своя версия будущего. Скажите, пожалуйста, какого будущего вы желали бы для нашей планеты? И как думаете, какие самые главные проблемы настоящего нужно для этого решить? Спасибо. Well, I, I think the, the, the key to our future is the preservation of the capacity of nature to serve mankind not mankind are arranged in, uh, in uh, 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 national form, but all of mankind. Nature provides us um, with, with free services that we cannot afford to provide for ourselves. And the, the, the story of the film actually does, uh, metaphorically, these, these uh, creatures that are coming from from outer space, this alien life form is driven by the imperative of every form of life, which is to is to preserve their species, to find a place to, to replicate and to prosper, to fit into a biological community a, 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 uh, where 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 each element of that uh, of that um, biotic community has a complicated relationship to every other element. And that's called biodiversity. On Earth, we have a really uh, a, a clear, um, necessary, uh, we have to devote ourselves to preserving life on Earth by taking care of our natural resources. We have to deal with the issues of deforestation. We have to deal with the issues of overfishing. We have to deal with um, a resource development that's unsustainable. We have to deal with resource use that's unsustainable. And we do that, we cannot do that without coming together, regardless of our nation, regardless of our status in, 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 our, in our own lives, in our own minds. We have to do this together. That has got to be the business of humanity. Or the planet nature will slough us off and uh, and uh, and continue without us because nature doesn't need people people need nature we're just another animal species 
So let's not take more than, let's not have the hubris, not, let's not have the uh, uh, ignorance to ignore our animal nature and to take care of nature. Uh, our animal, uh, the reality that we're animals and part of nature. That's just one of the things we need to do. <laughs> The previous, I mean, the, all the previous, maybe that you loved a lot in this the, one. The, the difference is that everything's different. Uh, different people, different uh, concerns, different character, different opportunity, uh, different place to shoot. Everything is different. Every time, every time you, you go to work, uh, that's the joy of being an actor having the opportunity to live different lives, to explore different uh, realities, to work with different people who are uh, uh, talented and, and generate uh, uh, or stimulate your imagination. And the challenge of it is always the same, to help tell the story. I think of my job as being an assistant storyteller these people have crafted a story and engaged me to help them tell it. And so I respect every experience that I have as, a, as an opportunity to, to learn, to do my, the best work that I'm capable of under the circumstances, and to serve, to be of utility to all the other collaborators that I work with. Sir. Um, every director works differently with music. I am not a musician. Some directors are far better trained in music than I am. I came out of an acting background and a photography background, and, um, and I'm a writer. So for me, I try to write my story, uh, tell it as best I can. I sometimes get in trouble, even probably on this movie, as Bob knows, because uh, when you have to do these test screenings, they always want a temp score, and they always want you to say, and I have learned something even on this movie, because I tend to push that away. And the reason is because I've always edited my films without the music. Um, I tell this little story about an editing exercise I did at film school once where, the, where the, the, the instructor came in and gave us a whole lot of black film and a whole lot of clear film and said, cut something together. And we thought he was joking. Like, what is this? And we took these two and he left the room. And we were left on the old movie over to cut the stuff. And what I learned out of that is that you're looking in an edit for a kind of rhythm and you can do amazing things. You're just black, white, black, white, black, white, black, white, white, black, white. And you're amazed at the different students with just these two pieces of film. Some people's stuff, you look at it like just gibberish, just bounce, and it's some established an amazing rhythm. It was almost like visual music. And that was the point of the lesson. So I don't know if I took that lesson too seriously, but I, I like to cut my films and find the drama and get the rhythm out of my story, because that's the area, I guess, where I feel strong. And then, obviously, we're adding temporary music, and obviously you're spotting, and I say, think this is where music would help carry and help the film. This is where it needs to be bigger to give it more drama. But sometimes music can be used as a crutch when a scene's not working and you're trying to save it with music. That's not a good place. I want my actors to have delivered on the scene and the music then to be able to just support them where necessary and, and get out of the way when necessary. So, um, frankly, in this case, Bob did work with Steve um, Jablonski on, on, on Transformers and knew him well and suggested him. And, and uh, you know, based on temporary tracks that we've done, he had an idea where we wanted to do the music, and then it's a collaboration, and, and he did a great job. Уважаемые коллеги, я, к сожалению, наше время подходит к концу, поэтому заключительный вопрос. Давайте до него возможность вот молодому человеку сидеть в центре. Я Рабольский Александр, Медиа Лик. В фильме огромное количество спецэффектов. Какая сцена была самой сложной технически? И вопрос к Арисону Форду. Вы сообщили сегодня в интервью IGN, что обсуждали с Ридли Скоттом участие в «Бегущей по лезвию 2». Как это возможно, если Декар, главный герой фильма... Смотрите, мы не обсуждаем сегодня другие там. картины. Мы, наверное, остановимся на специфике. Okay. Мистер Форд? Sure, yeah, the, 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 uh, well, there are two great, wonderful vision effects, powerful action sequences in the film that we really had a lot of fun doing. The one, of course, is the battle room, which is very famous from the book, um, where young people like yourself get to leap out into space in zero gravity and fly around and 
and, uh, and, and um, you know, in the, in, I remember thinking, how are we going to make this as visual as possible? And this is not a knock on the book, but in the book, it's a black room. And I thought, wow, we're going all the way up into space to be in a black box. We, we have to see out into space. So I threw this idea of the big glass dome out, and some people thought we were crazy, and Bob said it's going to cost an absolute fortune, but immediately backed me. And so we got enough money together to, to create what I hope in those four sequences in the battle room are very different sort of feelings because, because we're in a glass sphere, we can change the way the light moves through that room. The first time you go out, you see the beautiful blue earth below. The next time, it's kind of moonlit and the sun's behind the earth. It's more romantic for the relationship between Petra, um, but played by Hedda Steinfeld and Enda. There's a, there's a friendship forming between the boy and the girl, which is lovely. And then the next time, it's this strong sunlight for the battle scene. And then it's in the last battle, it's very dark and almost film noir. So, you know, you're looking as a filmmaker to be able to put your best visual foot forward in those scenes. And that was great fun to create. And then um, the, the final simulation room, obviously, at the end, where he, he plays that amazing video game with all the spaceships around him. And, and, uh, and, and I was with my twins at the planetarium. And one day I was wondering, how am I going to do the scene? Because in the book it's a video game that he plays on the computer. That's not very visual, it's very challenging. So what do I do? Put the images on the screen. I thought, what if the images were all around? And I was at the planetarium, and frankly, I just stole the idea from the planetarium with this big projector that comes down and projects this beautiful world all around you. And my kids just loved it. I thought, this is it for end this game. And then a bit later, I was at a concert at the Disney Concert Hall, and this conductor was standing still, but putting so much energy into the way he was getting the best out of his team, this orchestra. And I thought, that's it. We put Ender on a podium in the middle of this room and create a gestural language, which I got from the iPad, because my kids were playing on the iPad, and zoom, zoom. But what if you zoomed like this? And what if you rotated the world like this? Wouldn't that be a super cool game? So those things come together in your head, and. You speak to your producers and you throw these ideas at people who are much better than me at design. Ben Proctor, Sean Harwood, great designers. Matthew Butler, great visual effects supervisor. And you work together um, as a team. And I think that the team has done an amazing job of those two sequences. I'm very excited by them and very proud of them. And I hope you'll enjoy them. So thanks for your question. Спасибо, спасибо большое за вопрос. Я хочу поздравить наших сегодняшних гостей с премьерой великолепного фильма. И хочется пожелать, чтобы почаще к нам приходили.